Six foot eight, number one, Kyle Anderson. At the shooting guard position, at six foot six inches, number 24, Dylan Brooks. The other forward position, six feet ten inches, number 13, Jaron Jackson. At center, six feet ten inches, number 17, Jonas Valanciunas. The other guard, at six foot three inches, number 12, John Morant. Thank you for tuning in this Sunday evening. This is Kevin Harlan with Hall of Famer Doris Burke and Greg Anthony giving us the rundown from the sideline courtside, David Aldridge. DA, take it away. Well, Kyrie Irving rediscovered his maternal lineage with the White Mountain family of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. He lost his mother at a young age, and by connecting with her roots, he's found a piece of himself. The tribe gave him the name Little Mountain. Kevin? Great story, D.A., thank you. While we get a break, let's now take a look at the October standings out east. Taking a look at Brooklyn, they've had a very slow start to the season so far, down in the bottom half of the conference. And seeing where the Nets are, uh, they've been stuck in a rut the entire season. We talk about teams maximizing their potential. Well, the opposite's been the case with this group. I think, Greg, for them, it's obviously been very disappointing. And I get the sense it's starting to weigh on them night in and night out. Here are the starters for Brooklyn. Levert and Durant out on the perimeter. Allen is out there with Jordan. And it's Irving in at the point guard. And for Memphis, Morant and Brooks manning the backcourt. Jackson and Valanciunas, they're in the middle. And it's Anderson in at the three slot. He'll be the Nets off the tip. Now, here is Irving, and it's Jordan that's out the key. Doris, what do you think it's like for a team coming into a new season with a new head coach? You know what's fascinating to me is each individual organization, Kevin, seems to have their own vernacular, their own verbiage to describe their system. So with a new coach, number one, he's putting in a system. Number two, the guys are trying to familiarize themselves with his language, not only the X's and O's, but how does he communicate it? And yeah, right, right, that's a good point. The delivery of the message is sometimes as important as the as the X's and O's. No doubt. And Morant is great at putting pressure on defenders, which in turn draws contact. And purely from a physical standpoint, John Morant has it all. The height, the long arms, the frame to put on more weight. And few players are more explosive athletically. And he knocks down the first one. And with Morant, you not only get the physical attributes, Greg, you get the mental toughness and awareness. Yeah, this kid loves to compete. The bigger the game, the bigger he plays. I think we're looking at a potential all-NBA performer when it's all said and done. And so he's able to get one of two. Showing natural leadership skills, Morant has developed great rapport with his teammates. The pass to Allen. And here's Levert. Pocket six. Pass to KD. Over Morant. Nice follow through on the fadeaway. This guy is such a good all-around player. Karis LeVert sharpening his court awareness and finding his open teammates. Some power coming from the PG. Ah, that's right, GA. Seeing more and more of that these days. Backcourt guys who can elevate. We know versatility is huge in this game. Just a tremendous job finishing that play. Wow. And the first shot of the night for him, no good. Just over a minute and a half played here in this one. 
Now here's Morant. He's covered by Irving. Brooks kicks to Anderson. Here's Jackson. Rebound, Brooklyn. You're not going to see that very often. Plenty of space, but he just, let's face it, he whiffs on that one. Nobody near Irving. They grab their own miss. Allen, that's good. Well, so often we're talking about Jared Allen's length, and he does it nicely on the offensive glass right there. Duran against Anderson. And it's blocked by Jordan. Boy, the wingspan of DeAndre Jordan. This guy sends it back with a message. The Grizzlies have gone one of three from the field to start this one so far. Brooks outside. Pass to Morant. Score the basket, his second of two attempts. Gotta love watching Morant get after it. He goes all out. Tank, never on empty. Here's Irving. That doesn't go in either for Irving. The shooting numbers just aren't there yet in the quarter. Anderson against Durant. Anderson passes to Jackson. Over Irving. Jackson misses. Brooklyn's gone 0-3 from three-point land. Nothing yet going outside. Just under three and a half minutes gone here in the first quarter. And yes, it's good. When you think that this guy was so raw and so skinny coming into the league, now DeAndre Jordan brushing off these challenges with ease. Now here's Morant. He had a 30-point outing their last game against Chicago. I thought his physicality was crucial, too. You know, he kept the defense on their toes and repeatedly got to the free-throw line. Now, here's Durant. Jonas Valanciunas unable to get his shot to go. Well, think about the Nets' Kenny Atkinson, a finalist last season for NBA Coach of the Year. This young coach got a well-deserved contract extension. And what I love is his team competes at a high level every night. Jackson has the open look. Brooklyn with the rebound. Jordan's got four rebounds in this game. Nice D from Brooks. Those are chances almost always you can rely on him to get you two points, but the D just enough to keep him out of rhythm. That's how you share the rock. He does this time and time again. And Doris, you think about how hard this Brooklyn team competes. I think they take right after their head coach. I don't think there's any doubt, Kevin. Coach Atkinson is still willing to get on the court and jump into drills with his players. Let's remember, going back to the early days of his career, he was a player development coach. And before that, yes, he even played. That effort and willingness to break a sweat very much reflected in his group. And here's Valanciunas following the three-pointer by Kyrie Irving. Well, I'll tell you what, he's going to buy himself a ticket to the bench. If he keeps shooting it like that, he has been putrid here this quarter. Well, you respect the jump shooting, so you close tight, and Kevin Durant gets off on the dribble drive. Now here's Morant, covered by Irving. Passes it to Valanciunas. Puts it up from 12. A shot that time, not on target. Great D that time from Jordan. Irving looking over the floor. The pass to KD. And it's Brooklyn scoring again. And now you see them starting to really work the ball inside. And here's Brooks. He'll bring it up for the Grizzlies. Trailing by 10. Pass to Morant. They need this. He squares up and sinks it. Morant's got his third bucket of the night. Fantastic instincts there by Morant. Sizing up the D and then just taking what he sees. And the first timeout call to the game for Brooklyn. Doris, one of the biggest free agent signings in years. LeBron James going to the Lakers. What did you think of his first season with L.A.? 
Well, when you're LeBron James, perhaps no athlete in the history of the NBA has borne the weight of expectation as much as LeBron. So if there's anything short of a playoff appearance, there's disappointment. But what I would say is, through Christmas Day and his first real injury that he had to endure, LeBron was playing like an MVP. We are talking about one of the greatest to ever do it. I expect them to turn things around in Lakerland this year. I agree with you, and I agree on your prediction. Big group substitution here for Brooklyn. Let's take a look at the players who were the best on the glass a season ago. DeAndre Jordan, third. What a season he had in the paint. I mean, his rebounding numbers, really mind-boggling. Who wouldn't love to have a guy like that? And so it's Brooklyn with it. Eight-point game. And a beautiful feed leads to a monster jam. And what a way to start this game, dominating at both ends of the floor. And give them credit, Greg, for approaching this game with the right energy and intensity. This team has attacked every chance they've gotten. Now here's Morant. Seven points in the game. No, no good. And they've come out with a take-no-prisoners approach on the glass here tonight, guys. And they have owned the paint so far, and the score reflects it. I know it's early, Greg, but you have got to like the dominance down low. Right now, they are playing bully basketball. Here's Morant after the basket by Brooklyn. With the floater. Here now is Dinwiddie. Nine points last game out. Pass to Crawford. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. That one's on Morant. The Grizzlies' coaching search took two months. They finally settled on Taylor Jenkins, a former assistant coach with the Milwaukee Bucks. Jenkins, with an economics degree from Penn, fits the young academic profile of this Memphis front office. Worked for the Spurs six years as an assistant under Mike Budenholzer, who was the coach of the year in 2019. That pedigree helped him get the job. He throw good, Crawford. And until their playoff run, the Brooklyn Nets weren't a team we thought of as a free agent destination. And, and Doris, you almost forget that they play in the biggest market in the country. And Greg, who would have thought that in New York and Los Angeles, arguably the most competent franchises would be the Nets and the Clippers. These are two of the historically dilapidated teams no longer content to play second fiddle in those major markets. Greg, a new look roster for the Grizzlies. They got a lot more athletic this past summer. Well, John Moran and Brandon Clark, their first round picks, two of the more explosive players in the draft. The Grizzlies last in the league in pace last season. They may have cause to accelerate that tempo this year. Uh, a team's rebounding is a great measure of its energy, and theirs has been terrific here in the first quarter. Claxton the pass to Crawford. Dude. Tries to keep it alive. It's Clark with the rebound. And his defense so valuable. Not many can bother that shot at the rim. Boy, you see the effort. You see the range. This guy prides himself in his ability to shut you down. And the basket is good. And the Nets lead by 16. Yeah, we're seeing some fireworks from them already. Well, what I love is the game plan has been solid from the opening tip. And guys are making their shots. That's critical. Here's Melton. No points in the game yet for him. Here's Jang, and Jordan sends it back. Harris outside, to the left wing. Dinwiddie outside. 
high, arcing shot, and that's two points on the layup. Oh, this is the kind of start they were hoping for. The Grizzlies trail by 18. They've been looking out of sync out, offensively. Out. Yeah, the, the, their offense has ground to a standstill. So timeout called here. The first for Memphis. And the 6'6 point guard Spencer Dinwiddie. Second round pick of the Detroit Pistons in 2014. You know, Greg, they might have wished they held on to him. One of the most improved players in our league. Last season, he signed that four-year, $48 million extension from the Nets, rewarding his growth. Check out the stats for Harris. Last season's performance for him averaged about 13 points a game, four rebounds, and two assists. Well, fans of this team will take this kind of production from him without hesitation. I tell you, he has been a solid contributor. They have called his number, and he has delivered for them. Passes it to Melton. Tradition out to Clark. He kicks to Allen. Shot clock at five. Can they get it? Over Crawford. Not going to go that time. The Nets go the other way with it. This, of course, their first opportunity to play Memphis this season. And going back a season ago, it was a win for both sides in their two meetings. You know, despite the disparity in talent, these two teams played each other tough last year. Let's see how competitive they are this time around. That one falls. Wow, what a pass there. He made that a very easy basket with that setup. Dinwiddie surveying the floor and the pass to Crawford. Fires for three. And he was able to put it up in time, but doesn't fall. And so it's Brooklyn in command with a 16-point lead as the buzzer sounds. Their defense has been terrific in this game. We come back right after this. One of the league's best point guards, Kyrie Irving, had this to say about his competition. 2011, I came into a league where the point guard position was still being revolutionized, and now guys are solidifying that spot every single year. There are young guys coming in, but now we have established point guards that are franchise-changing point guards. And for me, having that competitive drive every single game, I know I'm going against an elite point guard every single game. So I think that now coming into the league, it's a lot different than it was before. Some say, Greg, a golden age at the point guard position. Yeah, and Irving right there with the best of them. Uh, he embraces the challenge. And glad to have you with us, folks. Second quarter of basketball. This game has not exactly been neck and neck, but plenty of time left in this one. And guys, the Nets enjoying a nice lead here. Well, this is the edge that great rim protection can give you. Total intimidation that first period. That is what has helped power them to this early lead. And now let's check out the lineups courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. Here's the second quarter of play. And Brooklyn, look at who they've got. We've got Spencer Dinwiddie. He's out there with Crawford. Joe Harris is out there with Jordan. And it's Claxton in at the four-man position. Now here's Jang. Nothing yet on the scoreboard for him. Memphis needs to get off a shot here. It's hauled in by Claxton. They have been board dominant in this game. That's definitely been a factor in crafting this huge lead. Whistle blows. Basket is good. So a chance here for a three-point play. They're finding lanes to the hoop now with consistency. Five buckets in a row from the paint. 
First trip to the free throw line for him tonight. And that one misses. No doubt uh, passing is a premium for this team game of the NBA. We love the individual star power, but it is a team game. Are there any playmakers out there that don't get doors, you think, enough credit for all that they do for their team? Well, the first guy that comes to mind is a man that Steve Kerr described as probably the smartest single basketball player he has ever been around, and that's Andre Iguodala. The numbers in terms of his scoring, obviously not eye-popping, but his incredible defense and then his elite passing skills have been so critical to so many championship teams. Here's Melton. Pass to Jang. To the wing right side. Here's Melton. It's good. It's his second basket. He's shooting two for four. Well, the touch and the focus. What a pretty move in the lane. And let's catch up with our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. Well, Kevin, Jaron Jackson Jr. is the son of an NBA player. And I'm so old, I covered his dad in college. Growing up, his parents let him find his passion, but the game was always in his genes. Jackson Jr. said, I've always prided myself on being more than just a basketball player, but I can't deny my laser focus on the sport. Kevin, he's following in his father's footsteps, but looking to create his own legacy. Terrific mentor, but he's just getting started, David. Thank you. It's the Nets now, following the score by Memphis. Harris dishes to Jordan. The 19-foot shot. Goes back up. He lays it in. Time out, time Jordan's out. got six. Yeah, and they've shown effort and aggression in the paint, really, right from the tip. Their rebounding edge right now, massive. Timeout called the Grizzlies. And, and you look at the cast-offs that have found success in Brooklyn Doors, a great part of the Nets story. And I think what the players appreciate is the team that gave them their first real shot to play significant minutes. That buy-in and urge to prove themselves a part of what makes their culture special. Memphis ends up going with the new group. A big group substitution here for Brooklyn. And for those of you just joining us, we're in the second quarter with about three minutes gone by. Allen June is inside. Defended by Allen. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. Well, the big man has quite the presence inside. Jonas Valanciunas gets physical and draws the contact. He's got to stay aggressive. And last season, Jonas Valanciunas averaging the fewest minutes of his career. Greg, at the same time, he was playing the best basketball of his career. I mean, his scoring per minute through the roof, rebounding at a career high level. He can dominate inside, especially at that offensive end. The first free throw is good. Well, Kevin, you know this. There's a long history of great players coming out of Lithuania, and Valanciunas right there with the best of them. Remember, back in 2012, this guy was the MVP of the Lithuanian Basketball League. And so he hits both. Brooklyn leading by 15. 
Irving with the ball. He had an 18-point outing in the last game against New York. And it wasn't only his scoring. The intensity on defense. He nabbed three steals that night. Now, here's Dinwiddie. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. That one's on Morant. You know, when Spencer Dinwiddie is attacking, he gets these kinds of calls. Simple as that. What we know unequivocally is Spencer Dinwiddie is far more than a terrific basketball player. Let's remember he scored 1,400 on his SATs. His mom was a professor at USC. And there's something very special about being raised in an academic environment. The free throw drops for Dinwiddie. And Doris, you talk about Dinwiddie's book smarts. His parents wanted him to attend Harvard. Yeah, he chose instead, Kevin, to attend the University of Colorado, believing the Pac-12 would be a better stepping stone to the NBA. And think about it, even now, this guy not shy about challenging authority. He will keep his coaches on their toes. And both free throws, good for Dinwiddie. Well, to me, it's the size, the strength, and the IQ of Spencer Dinwiddie. That's so impressive. This guy is unique at the point guard position. Here's Jackson, and that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle, and two shots coming up. The Grizzlies have been a winning team for most of the last decade. Injuries snapped their playoff streak back in 18, but the silver lining, a top draft pick they used to select, Jaron Jackson. That's good from Jackson. And in his rookie season, Jaron Jackson, the youngest player in the league, he seemed NBA ready. And already he impacts the game on both ends of the floor. A, a ton of upside with this young man. He's already helping the Grizz win games. And so Jackson nails both of them. Yeah, in this quarter, they've had the right approach, driving and drawing, initiating contact, create opportunities, get to the line. Now, here is Irving. He's got five. Durant, wide open, he fires. Misses the wing jet. Boy, he'll usually knock it down if he's left that wide open, just comes up empty. That one drops for him. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. Irving passes to Allen. Back to Irving. And again, no good by Brooklyn. The Grizzlies trail by 13. Pass to Morant. Back to Anderson. It's stolen by Allen. Brooks against Irving. Wound up there for Allen. An emphatic LU jam. Well, that's just tremendous length. Exceptional hands. Jared Allen. Nice and easy. Now here's Morant. Covered by Irving. And he could not get that one to go. A lot of contact. And he'll go to the line for two. It's on Jared Allen. And really, the defense fouling there to prevent the layup, but that's exactly what you need to do. And this kid, Ja Morant, came out of nowhere, under-recruited in high school, showed some promise in that first year of college, but boy, did he blow up. And the first one drops. And Morant really impacts the game in every area. It's incredible, Kevin. He gives you the points, the assists, the rebounds. But then you look at the box score and you also see a block, a couple steals. And I like that he shoots a high percentage at the line. Now 
That one falls, so he hits both of them. Brooklyn leading by 13. Outside Irving. Over Brooks. Feeds it to Dinwiddie. Here's Irving. Got a piece of it. And that's out of bounds. Brooklyn will retain possession. Just four to shoot. Here's Dinwiddie. Getting those long arms in the way and the vision of that shooter, Jonas Valanciunas, doesn't get the block, but he changed the shot. Now here's Morant. He's covered by Irving. Now Morant. Nine points in the game so far. The 19-foot shot. Second shot opportunity, and a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. It goes on Spencer Dinwiddie. But, Kevin, when Valanchunas forces the issue like that, he is really tough to handle. He does a good job drawing contact. These are his third and fourth free throw attempts of the game. That free throw missing. Doris, such an honor to be on this with you. And, and you were the first female to become a full-time NBA analyst, uh, breaking new ground. You've accomplished so much in your life, personally, professionally. What would you tell young women who are graduating college looking to get ahead in their career in what you've chosen? Well, first and foremost, I've been very lucky, Kevin. The game of basketball has been a part of my life since I was seven. It's been a driving force. I love it. I would just tell young women, times are changing. Um, dream big. There's nothing that's impossible. And I'm so thankful to the NBA players and coaches who have just wrapped their arms around me from the time I entered uh, this business. So kudos to those players who are part of the change, no question. And hard work. I have seen you work. I have seen you prepare. No one prepares more. No one works harder than you. Thanks, Gab. Grant. And the basket for the fourth time from the field. He's a healthy four for six. Well, offensively, this guy has been cooking. They are definitely not losing because of him. Irving dishes to Durant. And then Durant with the jam. Boy, KD just lethal on the drive to the rack, and he gets ahead of steam behind him. Forget about it. Here's Morant. Banked in off the glass. Moran's got six here in this quarter. I mean, the number of points they've scored in the paint already here is eye-opening. Irving against Brooks. Passes it to Allen. Dinwiddie outside. Second chance shot, and the rejection by Valanciunas. Well, Valanciunas reads the play and snuffs it out. That's the kind of defense you need from the five spot. Love seeing a point guard who can explode to the rim like that. Oh, great attitude and even a better finish. Boy, it's incredible how much explosive scoring ability can come from the lead guard position. That is a big-time play. Now here's Allen. He had a 12-point outing in their last game against New York. Yeah, but he was also a force on the defensive side. Two block shots and also altered a ton of shots. Brooks against Irving. Dinwiddie outside. Down to five on the shot clock. A floater. You know, and he started off shooting it pretty well, but here in the second, he has started to falter. I'll tell you, it has not been this guy's best night, but the teammates have been there to pick up the slack. Love it. A good board there, Kevin, but overall, they're getting slightly out-rebounded. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. And a one-year player at Texas, Jared Allen came into the league as a bit of a project. He's got ample playing time to develop 
in Brooklyn. Shoot two. And he can't get the first one. And Greg, safe to say, Allen's defense is ahead of his offense. Yeah, but, but his mobility and leaping ability serve him well as a finisher, providing that vertical spacing teams like to have inside. The Anthony Melt, he's jacked in for Memphis. And he sinks the second. Yeah, nice job of drawing the contact and creating opportunities at the line. 157 left now here in the second. Tries from 10. No good that time. The Nets go the other way with it. Earlier in the game, they had a 19-point lead. A tough loss coming against New York in their last game play. You know what? That's a game where the coach might just want to burn the video because there's no question they're a better team than what we saw, but they got crushed on that night. They slept walk through that entire effort. Way too much talent on the roster for them to let that happen. Such a boost to this offense when this guy can knock down uncontested threes. Durant with some nice D. You know, you can't impact a shot that close any better than he did on that possession. Boy, whether he blocks it or simply alters it, the result is pretty much the same. Now here's Durant. Ten points for him. From the line. Offensive rebound. Can't connect from short range. The Grizzlies trail by 12. They need a good offensive possession. Yeah, they've gone a long time without a bucket. Brooks outside. Jackson looking it over. Valanciunas passes to Melton. The Grizzlies with another miss. I'll tell you, a rough quarter for him, and that puts so much pressure on the guys around him. Back to Harris. Dinwiddie against Brooks. Stolen by Jackson. Brooks, the pass to Melton. To end the cold streak. And no luck with that time on the buzzer beater. Boy, you gotta love the defensive effort contesting that shot by Kyrie. Just trying to frustrate his man on the defensive end. And so we conclude the first half. Nets lead by 12. Live from the FedEx Forum, you're watching 2K Sports. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, welcome back to the NBA on 2K Sports. This is Ernie Johnson. Kenny the Jet Smith is right here. Say hey to the folks, Kenny. Hey, folks. Say hey to the yeah, folks, folks, Shaq. Hey, folks. folks. Hey, let's get this party started. Okay. A tremendous start for Kevin Durant. He had 10 points and four rebounds. Let's start with you, Shaq. What'd you think about the Nets? Well, it was an unselfish team-oriented half of basketball. The ball never stopped moving. Their offense had a great flow to it. It prevented anyone from getting lazy out there. They're always moving, cutting, knowing where they need to pass the ball. In. And now, Kenny, let's get your opinion on Memphis. They need to break it down. And I look at the individual areas that they're struggling with, like they're getting pounded. I mean pounded early on the board. That's a hustle stat. And now with the second half about to get underway, let's send you back courtside. See everybody with Kevin Harlan. And with a big gap on the scoreboard, the second half begins with very different goals for these teams. One side trying to mount a comeback, one side trying to protect their lead. Guys, John Morant has been sensational. Man, he's been running wild on them through that first half. Absolute dynamite on offense. Boy, he has been shouldering the load. Aggressive, skilled, talented, and thus far, unstoppable. 
And with the second half upon us, we'll find out if this game becomes the route that it's threatening to be. Jackson and Valanciunas, they're in the middle. Then there's Anderson, then it's Brooks, and it's Melton in at the one. And that's the group for Taylor Jenkins as we begin the second half. Now here's Anderson. Six to shoot. Here's Melton. Levert defending. Melton's shot is good. Melton's got six. Outside Irving. And there's the pass to Katie. Let's it go from 14. Nice touch on the bank shot. 12 points for him. Well, Kevin Durant's form, his release point, everything about his stroke is really impeccable. Anderson outside. Brooklyn with the rebound. Durant's got his fifth rebound right now in the game. And with the success they've had rebounding the basketball, they're right where you'd expect them to be, firmly in the driver's seat. Puts it up from 15. It's not going to go for him. Some solid defense there from Jackson. The Nets had to be so judicious and so smart with every move they made because they did not have top draft selections. So you have to use cap space to acquire picks. They had to find sleepers in the draft. They had to find players who were probably undervalued and then develop those players. This is an organization that used every tool at their disposal. And we've got an update here, so let's catch up with David Aldridge. Well, Kevin, Kenny Atkinson, who's a native of Long Island, now has his dream job, coaching the Brooklyn Nets. He doesn't need praise or recognition. Instead, he's fueled by the fear of failure. He says, I always feel like I'm one banana peel away from never being in the NBA again. And Kevin, he's got his team playing with that same determination. David, he sure does. Thank you very much. Jordan kicks to Irving. Pass to KD. Shot clock at six. Over Brooks. And it's Durant missing. And Doris, the Nets showed they could manufacture a rebuild. Kevin, what the Nets did was not easy. But to me, it shows you exactly how critical quality front office personnel is to the success of an organization. And the Nets were on point throughout the process. For Memphis, they have made their free throws at a pretty good clip. They've hit 8 of 10. And their numbers from the line last season, they're good, just not great. About 77% as a team. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And he makes the first. Jang, he's checked in for Jonas Valanciunas. And both free throws good for Brooks. A little under two and a half minutes gone by here in the third. Irving passes to Durant. That shot is good. He has made eight while missing only four. That's 67% shooting. This guy has been a catalyst for them all game long. What a job leading them to this lead. And it's Morant missing. Plus eight in the rebound differential. One more reason why they're in control. Jordan trying to free himself up. And the jam by Kevin Durant. Oh, do opposing defenses just start shaking their head when Kevin Durant starts cooking? Because he can heat up in a hurry. Count the basket. I love the spirit he's shown tonight, particularly on the offensive end. And to me, he's just playing smart, efficient basketball, really helping his team hang around this one. Now here's Crawford. Seven points in the game. Great positioning on the putback. And the Nets lead by 16. It is not easy trying to keep DeAndre Jordan off the boards. His combination of length and determination so impressive. And stolen by Irving. 
lays it up and banks it in. Irving's got his third basket of the night right there. And not hard to see why they are giving up points on this run. Just too many good looks from in close. Here's Morant. Off the left rim and out. And here's Brooklyn. They're on a 12-4 run. Crawford. And he drops in the way up off the glass. Crawford's got nine. Pretty much all of their buckets coming from inside the paint now. Morant passes to Jang. Defended by Durant. Five on the clock. I shot from 10 feet out. And it's Irving with the ball for the Brooklyn Nets. Next up will be a home game matched up against the Pacers. That'll be the first of two straight at home. And Durant, here we go. And the rebound goes to the Grizzlies. Jang's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. Brooks, left side. Pass to Morant. Just five on the clock. Here's Clark. And it's Durant with the rebound. And physically, there's no doubt they've been the stronger team. A plus 10 rebound advantage tells you all you need to know. Well, this is the beauty of Kyrie Irving. You think of him as a creator, but this guy in a catch and shoot just as lethal. Greg, you get so caught up in how great Durant is at scoring that you forget sometimes about his other terrific offensive skills. You know, Katie doesn't really get a lot of recognition for his passing, but he has fantastic vision. Uh, I mean, arguably, he might be the most underrated superstar ever. Sees so many double teams and does a great job of getting the ball out to open teammates. Shooting two. That's good from Morant. Some changes for Memphis. Valanciunas, he's checked in for Jang. And Allen subbed in for Brooks. Joe Harris is checked in for Brooklyn. So he gets them both. Wow, they've made every free throw here in the second half. Now here's Crawford. Nine points in the game so far. Passes to Irving. And he makes good on the layup. Irving's got seven now in this quarter. It's the balance that Kyrie Irving maintains. Even after getting hit on the drive, it's incredible. Timeout called the Grizzlies. A career best season for Kyrie Irving in 2018-19. Scoring just as great as ever, but it was the other areas, playmaking, rebounding, defense, where he made tremendous strides. some numbers for Durant. Last season, he played outstanding. He averaged about 26 points a game last year. Six assists and six rebounds. He's been nothing short of fantastic during that stretch. Offense coming very easily for him. And so much of it to me is his ability to read the floor, make the right decision, and then go right after the action he wants. Now here's Morant. He's got 19. And here we go, Brooklyn fast break. And Irving gets it to go on the assist by Harris. 14 points for Kyrie Irving. And you know what, he's shaking off the cold shooting performance from the first half. 
Here's Clark. That shot off. Great D that time from Durant. Here's Crawford. No good. And it's Memphis the other way. And finished off by Morant. And when Morant is cooking like this, it's fun to watch. He, he burns you in so many ways. Unloads from 13. Another one falls for Brooklyn. Yeah, three consecutive field goals have come right at the rim. The D had better start buckling now. From the stripe, Jordan with the rebound. Jordan's got rebound number 13 with that last one. Here's Harris. Softly drops in the floater. Harris has got his first basket of the night. Well, let me show you my floater game. Don't think I'm a long-distance shooter. Joe Harris says I've got more than that in my tool bag. Guarded by Harris, and Jordan sends it back. And with the ball out of bounds, Jordan touched it last. The Grizzlies making a switch here. Anderson's checked in, and the Nets making a change here as well. Dinwiddie's checked in. Clark dishes to Morant. Six on the shot clock. The pass to Valanciunas. Fires top of the key. Rebound, Brooklyn. Harris looking it over. To the inside. The kick out to Irving. Nice ball movement by Brooklyn. And Katie throws it down. Yeah, they're rolling right now. That lead continues to grow. And one of the things that's helped that is they're getting it done on both ends. Terrific focus on offense, and they're locked in defensively. Now here's Morant. 21 points in the game. And it's Valanciunas finishing it off. But Kevin, so much of the NBA is about pick and roll opportunities. And who better than Jonas Valanciunas to roll to the cup? Irving finds Jordan. Inside, and Katie throws it down. Clark. And guys, he's not an easy man to stop when he's got the rim in his sights. Never has been, never will be. He is a determined finisher. Well, Doris, you knew that his free agency would be one of the biggest stories of the summer. Everyone tried their best to land Kevin Durant. And even considering the injury, anyone would be willing and able to take Kevin Durant on their roster. Why? Because when he's healthy, you become an immediate contender. One shot. One shot. Get open, get open. And for Memphis, they're shooting just 33% in the second half so far. They need to look at more high-quality shots. Now here's Allen. Trying to find Dallin Junis. Gets it to him. Outside for Jackson. Pass to Morant. And it's sent back by Allen. This guy is a sensational shot blocker. Jared Allen twice on the pipes. Stolen by Levert. The feed to Harris. And he might not be a household name just yet, but Joe Harris is one of the game's true dead-eye marksmen. You can make the case he's the most underrated shooter in the league. The Nets have gone 6 of 8 from the free throw line tonight. That's good from Harris. Now you think about it over time, Joe Harris has made himself a viable option as an NBA player. He's got such offensive versatility. Yeah. 
He's perfect from the line this time. 55 seconds left here in the third quarter. Guys, they're looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively for sure. Allen passes to Valanciunas. And it's sent back by Allen. Here's Jackson. But they get it back. Up again, controls the rebound and puts it back up and in. That is really good work there on the offensive glass. Durant deciding where to go with it. Good on the triple. KD's got 16 points here in the second half. An even stronger second half. Tremendous efficiency at the offensive end of the floor. Now here's Morant. Defense right on him. To the paint. Allen Junis inside. And it's sent back by Allen. And so it's Kevin Durant making headlines and highlights for Brooklyn. He's up to 26 points in the game now. Just keeps pouring in the buckets. We've got more NBA basketball coming your way in just a minute. And a moment now as we take a look at our State Farm assists of the game. And the definition of teamwork right there, guys. I mean, what great communication between them, and what a beautiful feed. And, Greg, nothing better than chemistry, right? Working together to create a bucket. And there may not be a lot of drama down the stretch as we head into the fourth quarter, but stranger things have happened. Setting the floor for the Nets. Torian Prince is out there with Karuch. Then it's Johnson. Then there's Allen. And it's Temple in at the shooting guard position. Prince kicks to Johnson. Just five to shoot. Nice ball movement by Brooklyn. Here's Karuch. Here's Allen. Whistle blows. Bucket is good. And he'll have a chance at the line to make it a three-point play. Do you not love that by any means necessary attitude from Jared Allen, able to finish through the contact? One shot. One shot. Boy, picking Jared Allen, number 22, back in 2017 has paid off for the Nets. This guy has proven already in his early 20s to be an NBA caliber starting center. Here's Melton. Outside Jackson. The tray. Rebounded by Temple. And for Brooklyn, they're shooting one of the high points for them in this game at 54%. And slam dunk by Allen. Well, Jared Allen has length and athleticism, and that's an easy opportunity. Wow. And the Grizzlies shooting at a 32% clip from the field. They're just not executing. And Jared Allen grew up in the Austin area and played near his home at the University of Texas. Yeah, Kev, just one season with the Longhorns. He really came into the league considered a project. But, boy, his development is truly ahead of schedule. And here is Johnson after Josh Jackson hitting the three. Johnson outside. With some arc, he takes it up and lays it in. Johnson's got his first basket. Listen, teams know Tyler Johnson is explosive, so they don't want him getting to the cup. He does the next best thing, right? Send that floater in, Tyler. Now here's Jackson, and he converts the layup. Well, so great when your offense produces a shot that close to the rim. The rest of the work becomes easier. We're about two minutes into the fourth quarter in this one. Here's Johnson. And no good. And it's Memphis the other way. Pass to Jackson. 
Norris, in 2004, the Charlotte Bobcats became the NBA's 30th team. When do you think we're going to see another team added, whether it's an expansion or, or even multiple expansions? Did? Well, let's go directly to the most important source, and that's Commissioner Adam Silver, who has said that expansion is inevitable, but right now, not a huge priority. So, you know, listen, we've heard Seattle is on the short list of cities that wants to get a team, and what a great city, what a great NBA fan base. I hope someday we get back to Seattle. So much history up there, you're correct. Here's Temple, the Grizzlies making the shot. Kicks it to Allen. Friends outside. From deep three-point range, but they'll get another chance. Pass to Karuch. The Nets need to get a shot off here. That's tipped, and they'll keep possession. And there's the shot clock violation. Couldn't get the shot off in time. Gorky Dangs checked in for the Grizzlies. Claxton. Here's Melton. Allen outside. And we're about three and a half minutes into the fourth quarter. Here's Temple. He kicks it to Johnson. Prince against Allen. Five to shoot. Prince dishes to Johnson. Over Jackson. Misses off the right iron. And so Allen will bring it up for the Memphis Grizzlies. They've allowed just seven points here in the fourth quarter. They get it back. Jackson. Johnson with the block. You can see Tyler Johnson with that vertical has the ability to send it back. And here we go with Allen running it up the court. Jackson has the open look. Sinks the triple. Jackson's got a couple of three-pointers now in the fourth for the Grizzlies. Oh, great ball movement there. Johnson, the pass to Prince. And Josh Jackson picks up the foul. That's his first foul. Doris, it seems like Adam Silver, the NBA commissioner, is one of the most well-liked commissioners in all of sports worldwide. Why do you think that's so? Well, I think he was amongst the most important members of the staff of his predecessor, David Stern, who obviously oversaw the greatest growth in NBA history. The NBA became a global game. But Adam Silver didn't skip a beat. He is a great listener, a great communicator. And I've said this about the NBA for a very long time. It is a league that is in constant self-evaluation process. It is always looking for ways to improve the league, whether that means organizationally or with the play between the lines. And that's all you can ask for, Kevin. And here is Allen after Josh Jackson hitting the three. Let's it go. Rebound, Brooklyn. And here is Johnson. A floater. Here's Claxton. Another miss, and they desperately need a bucket. And that is a textbook example of how to defend your rim. That boy, to have someone back there who can erase your mistakes. What a big-time asset defensively. Now here's Jackson. Back to Jang. Now the pass to Melton. Three-pointer on the way. And again, it's Memphis with a three. Brooklyn's gotten off to an 0 for 2 start from downtown here in the fourth time quarter. Out, time now a timeout call by Brooklyn. Okay, hey, in basketball, like many sports, you can call some kind of penalty on almost every play. So with that in mind, where do we draw that line? I would say that most coaches and most players would say as long as there's consistency with officiating, they can adapt to the way the game is being called. As fans, as broadcasters, what we want to see, we want to see the game remain free-flowing, fluid, pretty, the ability to move and cut and not be impeded in your progress. That's what I want to see. And we see that most nights. No doubt. Let's 
sleek rig type of Cause my band's big though Wanna take a picture I hope you won't try to take none Think I'm lying And now we've got a moment for our Jordan player of the game Kevin Durant and guys, no doubt who our pick was going to be. Uh, he's made everyone else on the court look like they're playing at half speed. It's been total domination, and you can't help but just sit back and admire that performance. He silenced this crowd with an unreal display. His ability to drown out the noise and the hostility of an opposing crowd is pretty special. Johnson surveying the floor. Now here's Prince, guarded closely. Pass to Temple, just five on the clock. And he's on the money with his first shot today. Temple's got his first bucket of the night. Pick works well there, not much resistance from the D. It takes incredible effort to stay connected to the hip of the offensive player. You've got to want to work. Here's Melton. People look at that general manager position with the team. I think it grows with some organization, maybe shrinks in importance with others. Uh, but by and large, it is more stable than coaching, isn't it? That, well, that position of being a GM. Yeah, and I think, Kevin, if you were to ask coaches, one of the things I've heard sort of thrown out there as an idea is when you list the head coach's record, why not list the GM's record as well? Because the reality mm. is success in the NBA is contingent on so many things. What's your ownership like? What kind of front office personnel have they made great decisions? Do you have the best possible coaching comparative to the talent on your roster? So much contributes to winning, Kevin. And the ball's tied up, so we'll have a jump ball. That's a jump ball. And the Grizzlies with possession here. And the Grizzlies with possession. They're on a 13-4 run right now. Up top, Jang. Dishes it to Jackson. Six to shoot. Over to the wing. Here's Melton. Brooklyn with the rebound. Here's Karuch. He dishes it to Johnson. Rebound by Jang. Jang's got six rebounds in the game. I'll tell you, even though he's not playing his best basketball, the team has played well and picked it up. I love it. And so it's Johnson who brings the ball up for the Brooklyn Nets. Helps teams if they can keep the rights to their best player. We see it in other leagues with the franchise tag ever make its way, do you think, to the NBA? Well, this is going to be a negotiation point between the Players Association and the league itself. And the reality is it's going to have to be negotiated. What we know unequivocally, Kevin, is that these players now in the player empowerment era have more control about what franchise they play for and how long the duration of their contract is. How this all shakes out remains to be seen, but it is a point of conversation amongst the 30 NBA teams and the league leadership. There's no question about it. One-on-one -on -one fast break. Here's Jackson. Makes it off the glass. Jackson's got 10 points in the quarter. Well, I love watching Josh Jackson try to fend off the defense. Refuses to be bothered by the contact. Johnson outside. Pass to Temple. Here's Karuch over Jackson, and the shot goes in from Karuch. Karuch has got his first two points. And one team is just completely outclassing the other tonight. Spirited performance, and it really ignited what is turning out to be a monster win here for Brooklyn. Tonight, they did a great job of getting everyone involved. They had the good passing, and that led to some open shots. Solid play, definitely, Kevin. And it'll go down as their first official win of the new year. 
And so they'll take the first game of the season series, a team they'll only see twice. They're certainly happy to start it off with a win. And one of the key components to this victory, if not the biggest, was the incredible performance for Kevin Durant. Efficient productivity. You love what this guy has given to you on the offensive end. Now here's Allen after Torian Prince's miss. Melton passes to Jang. Passes it to Melton. Trying to get open is Jang. Melton, no good. Brooklyn in control. Five seconds separating the shot and game clocks. There's the pass to Claxton. Over in the corner, Kuroops connects from three-point range. Well, they knew it would be a hostile environment, and they rose to the challenge. And sometimes, Greg, when everyone's rooting against you, it seems to bring the unit closer together. It certainly did tonight. And so it's Brooklyn easily grabbing this one. To come into an opponent's building and dominate the way they did tonight says, I think, Greg, an awful lot about this team. I, I guess they don't need home cooking to feel at <laughs> home. I mean, Kevin, just a masterful performance all the way around. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Thanks very much. Kyrie, big numbers for you tonight. And I always wonder what it's like to be in a zone like that offensively. It was amazing. Uh, you know, more importantly, we got the win, and I couldn't have done it without my teammates. They did a heck of a job of competing every uh, every single minute of this game. It took everybody's effort from our bench. You know, it took a 15-man effort, and I'm glad we got the win. 15 men, but one man was a difference. Thanks, Kyrie. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. Great interview once again. And that'll do it, folks. For Greg Anthony, Doris Burke, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you next time.